What's up guys, Hot Noob here, and in this video I'm going to be continuing on with uh, why encryption over the internet is completely useless. Now one thing that I didn't go over in the previous video was uh, RSA and DH. Uh, those use asymmetrical encryption methods to make it so that um, you can't really read uh, the encrypted data if you just have the public key but you need the private key to be able to read that sort of thing so um, I'm going to be explaining why even RSA is completely useless and how people can um, decrypt this information or rather more specifically intercept it and this is one very large flaw or very big issue when it comes to internet security and it's really just uh, something that cannot be avoided unless the internet infrastructure itself changes so uh, let's let's get a shape here the, the little square uh, let's say you want your PC to connect to a server let's say it's PayPal or something like that and you're trying to connect but uh, you have this issue you have this bad guy he's just listening in let's say he's a virus or a router or the government or your ISP or whatever just some bad guy wanting to listen into whatever you're doing so your PC sends a request and it thinks it's sending it to the server but in reality it's going through our bad guy here so um, how does the bad guy intercept uh, this connection when there's uh, our security such as SSL? Well, it's very quite simple. Uh, what happens is your PC sends a request and the bad guy forwards that request to the server. And the server says, hey, let's start our SSL connection or whatever. Make it all secure. Do our RSA handshake or our Diffie-Hellman handshake or whatever. So. What it does is the server then proceeds to do the handshake. And, well, the server doesn't know who the PC is. The server thinks that the bad guy is the PC. So it does this connection. And then what does the bad guy do? Well, the bad guy generates a fake key or whatever. And then does a handshake with the PC. So what happens is you have two RSA handshakes or two SSL handshakes or whatever, and yeah, neither side can tell that it's being intercepted. So that's where newer versions of SSL come in and they implement a newer, supposedly more secure feature, which doesn't really help that much. It just makes things a little bit more contorted. And I mean, all in all reality, SSL is just one big frickin' money grab. That's all it is. And here's why. What good does a cert authority do when everything you're doing, like every bit, uh, every connection to the internet is being intercepted? Well, let's continue this on another step. So once the client, say, gets the, cert uh, the certificate from the bad guy, or quote the server, um... It then proceeds to verify this certificate. So it sends out another connection. And, oh, it goes to the bad guy again. And it goes to the certificate authority. Well, you know what? The bad guy doesn't even have to connect to the certificate authority because the bad guy generated a fake RSA certificate. So all the bad guy has to do is say, hey, that certificate I sent you, yeah, that's good. That's it. So when the PC tries to connect to a cert authority, say something like GoDaddy or whatever, you know, there's plenty of cert authorities. It, um, it just has to re re return the OK sign. Yes, that's the real cert. You're good to go. And that's it. You're screwed. There's really just no way around this issue. I mean, you can make things more and more contorted. You can say have a peer-to-peer a -peer network of certificate of for, uh, authorities or, um, I mean, that just makes it a little bit more difficult, but it's still very possible to uh, intercept. 
So what is the solution? Well, the solution is the same as uh, what I stated in the previous video, which is using the medium called real life. And that's pretty much it. So how do we use real life? Well, there is one very common uh, and fairly popular uh, method used today, which is called OTP, which stands for one time pass or pass key or whatever. And that's just one method. So basically, rather than just say sending over a key of one, two, three, four, which can eventually be brute forced, uh, you send over multiple keys, uh, let's say five or whatever. And this method has been proven to be extremely difficult to crack. But uh, of course, you know, there, that's just one method to send multiple keys. You can even bring it a little, in a little more security and say, uh, use a very large piece of data as the key and simply uh, use different points in that data as the key. That's another way to implement OTP. So there are various methods. And uh, yeah, so the overall concept though is that uh, you send over your key via in real life and you make it a freaking big key. That's about it. You make it huge. You make it like a, a freaking uh, 100 megs or something for your key or something like that, you know, something that's so ridiculously big that <coughs> there's no freaking way that it can be um, cracked. Unless, of course, uh, the person you're talking to has a virus that's specifically looking for that key or whatever, and uh, then you're screwed again. So, uh, every, there's not much um, security in general. But anywho, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, this is Hot Noob here, and please subscribe.